Welcome to another exciting episode of Cars with Big Boy Trev. I am Big Boy Trev and today we have something amazing courtesy of the brand with the three diamonds right from Japan. Introducing to you the Mitsubishi Outlander. But first things first, let's check out the highlights of today's show. This week on Cars with Big Boy Trev, we take a look at the used car market and evaluate whether the Mitsubishi Outlander is the best soft product to buy in the market. We check out its stylish design, cabin practicality, engine performance, value for money preposition, and this could be your next soft order. Catch this and much, much more only on Cars with Big Boy Trev this Sunday at 5 p.m. only on NTV. Kenyan soft order buyers are the hardest to please. They want style, performance, practicality, and safety in one package. Today on Cars with Big Boy Trev, we take a look at the Mitsubishi Outlander in the used car market as a serious contender in the soft roller category. Does it have what it takes to fight out with the likes of the Honda CRV, the capable Subaru Forester, or the ladies' dream, the Mazda CX-5? Well, let's find out. First things first, let's check out the front profile. Now, as you can see on this front profile, it has that Mitsubishi signature design theme, the cheetah eye that you've also seen on the Mitsubishi Eclipse and of course the Pajero Sport that we reviewed earlier on on Kazi Big Boy Trev. Of course with this chrome output on the grille, on the three diamonds that signifies Mitsubishi and the piano black finish also gives this car a premium look and feel. Hence my wording for today, the premier soft roller for Mitsubishi. So as you can see again on the lower part, lower lip of the bumper, again denoting performance and style courtesy of the Mitsubishi design team. Now, as you move across, this is where the Mitsubishi design theme comes through. And now you can see it's got upright sides to accommodate seven people inside the cabin. Not only that, you have lower hip line to allow the windows to have more air and more light into the cabin, making it a very good space for your family, especially if you're traveling on full throttle. Again, some that I've noted again, not too much creases on the doors, but as you can see, the side cutting has some uh, stainless steel trim just to give it that Jeanne Sequoia that we keep on talking about. And of course, as you move towards the side, you can still see the scuffing going all the way around to the lower part of the bumper. Also denoting that it's an off-road vehicle and of course it has a bit of style. At the back, as you can see, you have quadratic lights that are wrapped around also, denoting style and signature. That is something you probably find on the likes of the Colios and of course the Volkswagen Tiguan all space which we're going to reveal much later on. Of course, this chrome tip and the Mitsubishi on the rear panel gives this car that you know premium look and feel. And not only that, you can see the edging of the design of the rear window towards the tailgate. Again, trying to infuse two design themes into one, making it a sporty yet practical soft roller. But the question is, how practical is the cabin? We need to find out. Let's jump in and see what the Outlander is made of. So guys, you've seen from the walk around the design phase of this particular car. Mitsubishi have really tried to enhance the looks of the different variations of the Mitsubishi brands along the stable. Now it's time to find out if this particular Outlander still leads to the expectation that it is a premier soft roller in the Mitsubishi stable. So step inside and see what the cabin is all about. Now, as you can see, Mitsubishi have also gone for the forward design phase of the cabin, where basically the dashboard is designed far away to create an impression and illusion of space for the front passengers. Good legroom is amazing, and of course, give you that vision that you need to see at the end of the bonnet. Now, if you look at the dashboard, it's a simplistic design, not too fancy, but I can tell you with the use of the soft plastic and of course, stitched leather on the dash, I can tell you for a fact, premiumness is oozing. There is a strip that goes around the center console. It is stainless steel also giving that genre sequence. The first thing you do see is this audio-visual system courtesy of Rockford Foskett. For those who do not know Rockford Foskett, this is a premier American company that builds audio-visual units and of course it has a lot of sound to boot which you're going to try out right now. So I'm going to switch it on right now. I can tell you. You guys, I can tell you from the thumping bass and treble, this car is not playing. 
it's got eight speakers plus one subwoofer, a total of 600 watts courtesy of Rockford Foskit. And that sound is just but amazing. Now, how do you listen to sound? You can actually have Bluetooth connectivity, USB connectivity, and even a CD. You can actually load it. It's a top load design, so you can actually load it and you're able to listen to your tunes in crystal clear clarity that you so desire. Well, apart from that, this particular vehicle has an audio system, radio, and of course, vehicle dynamics that comes as standard within this Rockford Force Gate system. And remember, the design is finished with a piano black finish, just to give it that genesis we keep on talking about. Now, Rapid is the dual zone climate control system that varies the air in the cabin. Moving over to the gearbox console, as you can see, premiumness is the name of the game. Piano black finish finished out with stainless steel trim, again giving this car premium look. The gator shift gearbox also with the same treatment, and of course the full drive button that varies traction at given situations again. It's circular with the chrome uh, finish giving it this car again premiumness, premium, premium, premium. Of course they've tried to reduce the number of buttons and spaces including the traditional handbrake. Now you have a start, stop and a, an automatic handbrake with heel load assist just to ensure that you remain safe while on the road. And then of course being the top spec of this particular derivative you have heated seats center console as you can see here plenty of cubby holes and spaces here you have a 12 volt socket and a usb port to connect and charge your devices depending on what you want and if you're a person with an iphone you have an auxiliary port as well to plug in your iphone and listen to the tunes courtesy of that system now moving over to the instrument binnacle again it's hidden, it's dark, and of course it has the traditional Mitsubishi italics, where visibility is the name of the game. It's black on white hue, so it has good visibility, and of course at night it turns up into a white hue, so that making it warm and of course pleasurable while driving at night. Again, in the middle you do have a monochrome display that houses a trip computer, it will give you range, it will give you the odometer reading and many other functionalities of the car. Left hand side tachometer, right hand side of course the speedometer. And you can vary even the light of the instrument binnacle. How amazing is that? Now moving out to the steering wheel, three spoke leather, and of course it has a piano black and chrome finish. Left hand side you control every aspect of this audio system. On the right hand side, cruise control functionality, and not forgetting the devil horns. It allows you to toggle through the different gear settings without taking your hands off the wheel. And of course, explore the full potential of that 2.4 liter engine that has a lot of power and torque. We're gonna sample out much, much later. As you can see. Big boy is comfortable, leather seats are very supportive and firm, and they are perforated. The leather quality is amazing, and of course you can adjust the seats uh, eight different ways. It doesn't have memory seating, but it is flexible enough to fit any profile. It's, uh, for myself, I'm very comfortable, I'm six foot one, I can adjust the seat based on my preference, and including the steering wheel as well, where I can do a tilt or telescopic functionality to ensure that I'm very comfortable when piloting this particular car. Now that's a third of the story. Let's go to the back and see what the second and third row sitting is all about. The boot space and then we go on the road and see if this Outlander is the best soft roader in the Kenyan market. So guys, moving at the back, as you can see, the cabin is quite spacious. I am six foot one and right now I'm sitting on the first row and I can tell you there's just more than enough legroom for me because I'm a big person and even the headroom. And of course, because it has a sunroof, it has a reduced headroom simply because of this system. And that, it's standing for any normal person, it's actually a very good space to be in. You actually have three seats, the sculpted, and of course, there's plenty of space. And this being a four-wheel drive, in fact, one thing that I like is that the transmission tunnel is well low, so you can actually have somebody sitting there in the middle quite comfortably. And of course, if there's no one, then you can retract the armrests and you can have long journeys while enjoying this Outlander. There are two cup holders for the two passengers over here, and of course, you have ISOFIX, which comes as standard, so that when you're securing your baby seat, your baby remains safe while in the Outlander. Obviously, of course, it has cut-in airbags, there are six of them, and extends all the way to the rear seat, the five plus two seating, and that keeps all your family safe during any form of an accident. Very, very important. But of course, you know, the main challenge, the main item for safety is the safety belt. Make sure you belt up, especially during this Christmas season. Now, as you can see, I have good space, but this seat's also very flexible. 60-40 to allow accommodation of large or irregular objects within the cabin. And of course, once you take on the second seat, put it down, then you have massive space. So let's check out the second seating and see how much space it has. And then we go to the boot, and then we drive out in the Mitsubishi Outlander. 
So moving over to the back and opening, you can see a massive space, over 430 liters of boot space in this particular car. And you can increase it depending on the size of the load. However, this being a 5 plus 2, if you have maybe more passengers, maybe more kids, you need to transport in this particular car, then you're able to raise the two rear seats. So basically, you pull the two toggles together, revealing two seats that can accommodate two average-sized children. I can't fit there. However, my colleagues were very pleasant to give themselves as a dummy, and they actually can see they can fit quite comfortably in this particular car. And even on that setting, you do have quite a number of things. You do have a USB port and cup holders that comes as standard on this particular car. And then if you want to take it down, you just pull the toggles again, and they lie flat so that you're able to push in stuff quite easily without stress. That is the practicality aspect of this particular car. Plenty of space, uh, tethers, and of course you do have stuff to keep in. And even right here, you can actually have a space where you can actually hide some valuables when you're traveling on full load. That said, it's time to drive this car and feel the Myvek engine that is in the Mitsubishi Outland. And then you're gonna go off-road, give you value for money proposition as to why it is the best premium soft roader in the business. Stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome to Kazi Big Boy Trev. Today is about a recap of the tip that I did to South Africa recently, courtesy of Volkswagen. Our first stop is the National Sales Office. We had a chance to meet a guy called Thomas Mills who gave us his brief description of how Volkswagen intends to penetrate the elusive sub-Saharan African market. The different models that are coming in and of course the challenges he faces every day to penetrate the Volkswagen brand into the region. After that, it was time for us to visit the Volkswagen South Africa showroom outside Forways and a chance to see the customer CI of the new Volkswagen brand, so how their vehicles are actually arranged and of course the new models available and how they service these particular vehicles. Right after that, it was time for us to visit the National Parts Center outside Centurion. We just saw how big that organization is in terms of moving spare parts from point A to B and having a lead time of 48 hours to distribute parts across South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. After that, it was time for us to also visit the National Training Academy, which is right next door. We had a chance to see how Volkswagen trains technicians across Sub-Saharan Africa to handle their vehicles, the new technologies, and of course, train them on how to sell Volkswagens in this difficult region. After that, it was time for us to visit the Zotkops Raceway, where the Volkswagen Advanced Driving Academy were actually hosting us and gave us a chance to hammer the Golf R, which is the hottest hatch in the market, and they had a chance to show us the capabilities of this particular vehicle from a slalom, wet skid pan, and of course, hot laps, which actually made my day. I love the Golf R, 320 horsepower, 450 Nm of torque, Haldex four-wheel drive system, amazing bit of kit. After that scintillating ride, we flew all the way to Carriega and Port Elizabeth to see how the polos are being assembled. But first, we had a chance to visit the Volkswagen Pavilion, which is a museum which hosts 70 years of Volkswagen in South Africa. And I can tell you, you could see the polo, the combi, uh, the golf, and many other vehicles that have made history in the region. Then it was a business session courtesy of Volkswagen before we get into the plant. And, and Ms. Martina Biene gave us a description of what Volkswagen intends to achieve in penetrating Sub-Saharan Africa market. It was time to visit the facility. We saw the polo being assembled from start to finish. It was an amazing thing. Plus, we had a chance also to actually test these particular vehicles. Afterwards, we drove the Amarok, which is coming very soon in Africa. It was a bit of a good drive, and I enjoyed this particular vehicle. We are sending out this big boy, Trev. Drive safe and be safe. So guys, now we are in the cabin of this Mitsubishi Outland and I can tell you, it still has that sporting DNA that Mitsubishi has had for many, many years. Because as you know, Mitsubishi have been contenders in the World Rally Championship and of course the Paris Dakar where quite a number of their technologies are now part and parcel of this particular vehicle. So let's start with the engine. Now basically what this engine has is a brand new engine by Mitsubishi, 2.4 litre petrol 16 valve with multi-point fuel injection and a technology called MIVEC. MIVEC, which stands for Mitsubishi Intelligent Variable Valve Timing Electronic Control System, varies the way the valves open and close at different intervals to allow you to have very good low-end torque and of course higher response and better fuel economy, especially in traffic. Now, on full gas and on sport mode, this particular car will accelerate from 0 to 100 in under 10 seconds considering it's 
listen to that pulls and pulls and that new technology has made Mitsubishi very very competitive in all disciplines of sport and I can tell you the responsiveness and sharpness is amazing now all that power is sent to the four poles courtesy of a six-speed CVT now that gearbox allows you to explore the full potential of this Mitsubishi engine and of course it turns a fuel consumption figure of nine liters per hundred kilometers on a combined cycle remember this varies with the weight of the vehicle how you drive and many other factors again that is so important because in the suv world most of the buyers want style comfort practicality performance efficiency all in that package so having the right mix and making sure that you have good fuel efficiency the cvt option is actually the best now we know how it performs it's very good on tarmac the chassis again comes from Mitsubishi's modular architecture that you probably find it on the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross and many others that are in the stable. Now this chassis is very sturdy and also impacts a lot when it comes to safety. Up front you do have McPherson struts, at the back you have multi-link coil suspension that not only gives you superb ride comfort on tarmac but also during off-road with a long stroke setting makes this car very comfortable and very capable off-road with the four-wheel drive system the Invex 3 system now speaking of safety we have quite a number of items that makes this car very safe so from active uh, features including ABS, ESP, stability control all this up together tandem to make sure that you remain out of harm's way but in case all hell breaks loose you can rely on the six airbags that comes as standard in this particular vehicle and of course the safety belt and a five-star crash safety cell that dissipates impact energy away from the cabin cell making sure that you remain safe at any given time that's the rise philosophy courtesy of mitsubishi now that said i've driven this car it feels good it's comfortable it's quiet the noise vibration and harshness is amazing and it's time to see if it can do a little bit of off-roading it's not a full-on Mitsubishi Pajero Sport or Pajero, but it can handle the maram quite easily. So we're going to just venture out out of the tarmac and get into some maram and see what the Invex 3 four-wheel drive system is all about. Courtesy of Kazi Big Boy Trev. So guys, we've just ventured off tarmac into a maram section and are just about to sample the four-wheel drive system of this Mitsubishi Outlander. Remember I mentioned earlier that the Mitsubishi Outlander comes from a family where their 4x4 heritage and capabilities are known from the Paris Dakar to the World Rally Championship. Now this particular system called the Invex 3 transmission four-wheel drive system basically varies the amount of torque between axles to ensure that you have maximum grip at any given surface. So for today we're going to see how this thing works on this particular Outlander. So the first thing I will do because I'm in a maram surface, I will switch on the button. It has three settings. It has four-wheel drive eco, four-wheel drive auto and of course four-wheel drive lock that is low range. So for the, because on high we've been on eco, four-wheel drive eco, basically it's the front wheels that are running and then on auto it's a four wheel, so it's four high, so there's maximum grip and traction on that surface. So we're gonna just click that and then see what this transmission does. Now off we go. Now one thing that I do notice about this particular car is the fact that there is very minimum slip courtesy of this Invex 3 transmission. Now it, it uses wheel sensors to ensure that there is no wheel that has any loss of grip. And if there's any, then the system will basically sensor and slow down the wheel that is slipping to ensure that you regain traction at any given time. And remember, when you're doing a bit of off-roading, it's always good to map out your course. So this course that we are in is full of rats. So ground clearance comes in good play, over 210 millimeters, standard on this particular vehicle. And of course, the long stroke suspension, front McPherson's and rear multi-link suspension ensures that the passengers get a good ride, especially when they're doing some off-road surfaces. And of course, in case you need to, you know, just have that off-roading capability, then the Invex 3 kicks in to ensure that you have no slip. So basically, this car feels very good. Um, the suspension travel is good. It's not too much. You don't feel as if you are going over boulders or anything. So it tries to level out the vehicle so that you have maximum comfort. And even the traction, as it's not slipping at all. There's no place where I've 
hard to accelerate too hard to get out of you know a rut it does very well and remember also kenya because we are a country where rain is prominent again wheel slip is so important in that case you will switch on the four wheel drive lock which locks the diffs to ensure that there's minimum slip at any given time so basically that invex 3 distributes torque to the wheel that is affected and slows down and makes sure that you have maximum traction at any given time so so far so good i can tell you this car actually feels very comfortable it's like i'm just driving on a maram road yet it is full of rats and i'm not even afraid of the you know the the ground clearance because it's amazing the suspension is doing its work absolutely well the steering is soft and you're able to navigate quite easily without the need of you know turning in too much um and creating something called wheel lock that said it's time for me to move over and give you value for money proposition as to why this particular car is the best premium soft roller in the market stay tuned so guys you've seen what the mitsubishi outlander is all about style performance practicality safety and of course absolute value for money the mitsubishi outlander comes in two derivatives the petrol 2.4 liter with mivec technology with a market price of 2.8 to 3 million kenya shillings and of course the plug-in hybrid or phev version coming at 3.5 million kenya shillings in terms of servicing the 2.4 liter petrol will cost you about 20,000 Kenya shillings for minor service and 35 to 40,000 shillings for major service at independent service centers. I know you're wondering who are the rivals in this segment. I can tell you for a fact, let's start with the big boys, the Toyota RAV4, the Nissan x trail the Hyundai Santa Fe, and many others that are in this particular category. Question is, do you reckon this particular car gives absolute value for money as compared to the rivals? Send your thoughts as seen on the social media notes below. We'll get back to you next week with all the details. Well, signing out, this is Big Boy Trev. Drive safe and be safe.